how would it feel to drive from Australia to Tasmania without the need for a ferry? It may sound like a dream, but what if this vision could become a reality? Long ago, Tasmania was linked to mainland Australia by a land bridge, allowing the Aboriginal people to travel between the two. However, around 12,000 years ago, rising sea levels separated the island, leaving it isolated ever since. For decades, the idea of a physical link between Tasmania and the Australian mainland has been a tantalizing vision, sparking debates and captivating imaginations. But could it actually become a reality? The journey from concept to construction is riddled with immense challenges, technical, financial, and environmental, yet the potential rewards are nothing short of transformative. Today, let's dive into the insane plan to build a bridge from Australia to Tasmania. Exploring the feasibility of building such a colossal infrastructure project, the various routes that could be considered, and the real hurdles standing in the way. Don't forget to click on that subscribe button and like this video as it's the best way to support this channel. The idea of connecting Tasmania to the mainland via a bridge or tunnel has been discussed intermittently for decades, but no concrete plans have materialized. Early proposals in the 1950s considered the feasibility of crossing the Bass Strait, driven by the belief that Tasmania's isolation hindered its economic growth. In the 1990s, the idea resurfaced due to the state's economic struggles, with calls for better infrastructure links to the mainland. Several plans were proposed, but these were shelved due to financial, technical, and environmental challenges. In recent years, the concept has re-emerged in public discussions, often as a solution to the high cost of ferry transport. However, each time the project is raised, it faces resistance, with some supporting the idea, while others remain skeptical of its feasibility. Engineers have conducted feasibility studies on the idea of connecting Tasmania to the mainland, focusing on the Bass Strait's challenging seas and deep waters, but no formal plans have emerged. While the bridge or tunnel project has not received government backing, recent infrastructure initiatives like the Mariners Link an electricity interconnector between Tasmania and Victoria highlight the ongoing focus on improving regional connectivity. There are three potential routes for a bridge or tunnel connecting Tasmania to the Australian mainland. The first and most direct option is a crossing of the Bass Strait, which spans approximately 240 kilometers at its narrowest point. While this route offers the shortest distance, it presents significant engineering and environmental challenges due to the deep waters, rough seas, and harsh weather conditions. The second option involves using Flinders Island, located about 50 kilometers from Tasmania and approximately 200 kilometers from the mainland. This route offers shallower, more stable waters, making it technically more feasible. The third option is a connection via King Island, situated approximately 100 kilometers from Tasmania and 120 kilometers from the mainland. This route offers a middle ground between the other two, with relatively shallow waters and a more manageable distance from both Tasmania and the mainland. While both the Flinders Island and King Island routes present potential advantages, such as reducing the length of the crossing and simplifying construction, they still face challenges in terms of seabed conditions, environmental impacts, and the need for additional infrastructure. Considering all three options, the Bass Strait crossing remains the most viable, as it offers a direct connection between Tasmania and the mainland. This route minimizes the need for additional infrastructure and simplifies construction, ultimately reducing overall costs. The construction of a crossing across the Bass Strait could either be a bridge or a deep sea tunnel both of which would present significant engineering and environmental challenges. The longest sea bridge in the world, the Hong Kong Zhuhai Macau Bridge, spans 55 kilometers. And what would be required for the Bass Strait is more than four times longer than this, making it an incredibly ambitious and massive project. To accommodate the long distance and challenging geological conditions, the construction of a bridge across the Bass Strait would likely require a cable-stayed bridge or suspension bridge design. 
as both bridge types are known for their ability to span long distances and handle the dynamic forces caused by wind and weather. The major challenges in constructing such a bridge would include the need for multiple support towers and foundations in deep and rocky seabed conditions. The extreme weather of the Bass Strait would pose additional challenges, as the bridge would need to withstand the rough seas, strong winds, and storms. Additionally, the risk of seismic activity in the region must be carefully considered, as it could affect the bridge's stability over time. An alternative to a bridge is constructing a tunnel beneath the Bass Strait. While tunneling technology has advanced in recent years, building a tunnel over 240 kilometers long would present significant challenges. The Saiken Tunnel in Japan, the longest sea tunnel at 53.8 kilometers, and the Channel Tunnel connecting the UK and France at 50.5 kilometers, provide useful precedents. However, a tunnel across the Bass Strait would be over four times longer, making it the longest in the world if ever constructed. Given the varying geological conditions, a combination of tunneling methods may be the most effective approach. For shallower sections with less challenging seabed conditions, immersed tube tunnels would be suitable. These involve prefabricated sections of the tunnel being floated into place and then sunk. In deeper, rockier sections of the Bass Strait, tunnel boring machines would be more appropriate. TBMs are capable of cutting through hard rock and are better suited for deeper, more complex geological layers. For the deepest and most challenging sections, a submerged floating tunnel would be a viable solution. This technology involves the tunnel floating in the water, supported by buoyancy. It is particularly suitable for areas with extreme depth or unstable seabeds, where traditional tunneling methods may face limitations. A mix of these tunneling technologies would enable the project to adapt to the Bass Strait's varying geological conditions, ensuring its feasibility and long-term stability. The cost of constructing either a bridge or tunnel across the Bass Strait would be astronomical. The Seikon Tunnel in Japan, which spans 53.8 kilometers, cost approximately $7 billion to build. A 240-kilometer tunnel across Bass Strait could exceed $40 billion, considering the challenging geological conditions and advanced tunneling technology required. On the other hand, the construction of a bridge would likely be even more expensive, with estimates reaching over $80 billion due to the need for extensive planning, materials, and support towers to span the vast distance. For comparison, the Hong kong zhuhai macau bridge cost approximately $20 billion to build. In addition to the upfront construction costs, long-term maintenance for both the bridge and tunnel would be significant, further increasing the financial burden. Given the scale of investment required, it remains uncertain whether the economic benefits would justify such an immense expense. Both the construction of a bridge and a tunnel across the Bass Strait has the potential to disrupt both land and marine ecosystems. Tasmania is home to protected areas and World Heritage Sites, including the Tasmanian Wilderness World Heritage Area, which shelter species like the Tasmanian Devil and the orange-bellied parrot. On the marine side, construction could affect species such as the southern right whale, dolphins, and various fish populations through noise, sediment disruption, and habitat loss. The disturbance of the seabed during tunneling or piling, along with the physical presence of the structures, could further harm marine habitats. Given these risks, extensive environmental assessments would be necessary to fully understand the impact. Mitigation strategies would also need to be implemented to minimize harm to these critical ecosystems. Despite the various challenges, the primary argument for building a bridge or tunnel between Tasmania and mainland Australia is its potential to deliver major economic benefits. Tasmania, though rich in resources and tourism appeal, struggles with geographic isolation relying heavily on costly and weather-dependent ferry services for transport. A fixed connection could offer a more reliable and efficient way to move people and goods, particularly Tasmania's key exports like wine, dairy, and seafood. 
lower transport costs could benefit both producers and consumers. Additionally, improved access could significantly boost tourism by making the island more reachable, increasing demand for local services and businesses. The infrastructure could also attract investment from companies looking to tap into Tasmania's workforce and natural resources, driving job creation and economic growth. Overall, a physical link promises to integrate Tasmania more closely with the national economy and unlock new opportunities for development. While a bridge or tunnel between Tasmania and the Australian mainland appears unlikely in the near future due to substantial financial, technical, and environmental challenges, the concept continues to capture public interest, offering significant economic, logistical, and tourism benefits. On a positive note, ongoing regional infrastructure projects like the Mariness Link are paving the way for larger initiatives in the future. As these projects progress and engineering technology continue to advance, they could create the foundation needed to make the ambitious vision of a Tasmania mainland connection a reality. Do you think a bridge from Australia to Tasmania will ever be built? Share your thoughts in the comments section below. Thanks for watching and see you in the next video.